Hi everyone, and welcome back to English for You. I'm Pat, and I'm Ben. So today we're talking about the second day of our fun fact article. So let's kind of recap day one and the main points of what we talked about. And it's all about the calendar. And we talked about how the Western character dates the years A.D. after the birth of Jesus. Yeah, and however, the calendar's older, and the years before are B.C. before Christ. Okay. Of course, that just applies to the Western calendar. Other calendars have different things. So the calendar we use today dates back to around 700 B.C. and it was invented in ancient Rome. And it began with March and only had ten months. However, this meant winter and summer wouldn't be in the same months each year. So very confusing.、Uh, so a Roman king, around a hundred years later, six hundred BC, he decided they would add two more months to the calendar, and they added January and February. Now January is named after Janus, the Roman god of entrances and beginnings. Yeah, so that's yeah. it's a good choice for the、oh, first、yes. month of the year, really.、Yeah. So that's when the first month kind of became January. However, there was still a problem. The year was too long. Oh no, that's definitely a big problem. Yeah, how do they fix it then? Well,、yeah. we saw we saw at the end of day、uh, day one, it took the Roman leader Julius Caesar to fix it.、Uh, we saw in day one that he said the calendar, the year will be three hundred and sixty five days long. That's the right number of days. Yeah. So today we'll find more about that. Let's read through day two of the article. Reading. Fun facts: Julius Caesar used his new calendar as a political tool. By then, Rome controlled Britain, France, Spain, and Greece, among other places. Before Caesar, the various cultures throughout the empire had the freedom to hold religious celebrations whenever they wanted. This freedom came to an end when Caesar imposed the new calendar on these cultures to remind them of Roman power. He forced the empire to recognize the dates of Roman holidays and political events. By the time the Roman Empire fell, around the year 500 A.D., Caesar's calendar was well established in Europe. However, former territories became free to use the calendar as they wished. Some cultures in Italy changed New Year's Day to September 23rd, the birthday of the first Roman emperor. Some Christian cultures moved the day to Christmas or Easter. This continued for some time before Pope Gregory helped bring the problem to an end. Gregory standardized the calendar in 1582 and added one extra day every four years, a leap year. This exists because astronomers noticed that the Earth took 365.25 days to circle the sun. Not 365. So the article says Julius Caesar used his new calendar as a political tool. Now this brings us to political, an adjective. This means relating to the government. Now oftentimes we hear the term political figures, which could be the mayor or president, like Mayor Cohen or President Tsai. Now political means the governing of a land or country. So we can say, for example, the political strategy of the United States is to help countries around the world. Now, healthcare is a major political issue in this year's election as well. Yeah, it's、uh, definitely going to be one of the things that gets talked about.、Yeah. Uh, my country's political issues have pretty much been one thing for the past <laughs> three years: Brexit, Brexit, and more、yep. Brexit. Okay, so Caesar was using his calendar as a political tool. So he was not just using it to say, "Well, let's make the year the right length." He was kind of going, "Well, what can we get out of this for Rome? What can we do to sort of make it easier to govern all of these lands?" And this is relevant because, as we see in the article, by then Rome controlled Britain, France, Spain, 
and Greece, amongst other among other places. Wow, so much! Yeah, they hadn't got too far into Britain at that point. They'd only just made a few sort of landings、oh. on the coast and fought a few battles. But、uh, Caesar had taken over pretty much all of France himself. Spain they'd had for a lot longer. Greece they'd had for hundreds of years. They had parts of North Africa, the Middle East, chunks of Europe. Uh, yeah, Rome, Rome's republic, as it was back then, was really big, and they controlled a lot of other countries. To control is to be in charge of something, to manage it, and to make all the decisions and tell people what to do, and also to make sure people follow the rules. For example, a teacher needs to control a class. As another example, we could say, before the UK was controlled by its kings. But now the government runs things. Oh, that's a little better. Yeah, more freedom for everyone, not so much a dictatorship as one person can rule above all. I don't know. That that might actually help us out. <laughs> us. If one person just did the, like made the decisions, it might. It would be faster. It'd, it'd be more it'd be, efficient. It'd be quicker. Yeah. yeah. It, and if you've got a basically, it's a system that works if you've got a really good king, but it fails <laughs>、yes. when you have a really bad one. Watch out、so. who your king is. Lesson、exactly. learned right there. So、yeah. Rome controlled. All of these countries and all of the people in it, but what did、yeah. that mean? Well, according to the article, before Caesar, the various cultures throughout the empire had the freedom to hold religious celebrations whenever they wanted. Now, this kind of takes us to empire as well. Now, an empire is a territory of something. Now, it's normally where a king rules his empire, all the people who lives in his land. Yeah, we yeah. often think of it as kind of being like it starts from your country. Country and then、yeah. you add other countries sort of to it by、exactly. taking, them, taking over. them over with a war, fighting. Them. Usually, war, yeah. yeah. Like if you think of the British Empire, they had、yeah. countries all around the world, pretty much everywhere, sort of from Hong Kong this、yeah. side to parts of the United States, exactly. Like over on the other side in Canada and so on. Yeah. Now there's another word we have here as well. Various. This adjective means a lot of different types of something. Now we could say the dress had various colors, just many colors, or there are various tastes such as sweet, salty, and spicy. So it's many of something. Now here's an example sentence. In the United States, there are various types of people with different backgrounds. Now it could be what color they are, or just their monetary backgrounds, such as rich and poor, or people from different countries, such as Asia, South America, so and so. Yeah, and all of these different cultures. So, part people in Spain, in France, in bits of Germany, in in Egypt, and so on that Rome controlled. They had the freedom to hold religious celebrations whenever they wanted. If you've got freedom, it's the right and the ability to do something the way you want, without anybody telling you that you can't do it or how you have to do it. So this includes the power to act, to think, to speak, and to do as you want. So here's an example: people who live in North Korea don't have the same kind of freedom as people who live in other countries do.、Yes. Yeah, they have kind of their own internet, and they、yeah. sort of have to do a lot of what they're told, and not got the freedom to、yeah. say I don't like this,、exactly. and so on. It's censored, which means the government kind of protects it and see what is okay or not okay to put out there. Exactly. So、yeah. these people that they could have a celebration whenever they wanted. What do we、yeah. mean by celebration? Now, celebration. This means a party of some sort or a feast. Now we celebrate birthday parties in Chinese New Year. It's kind of like special days that have special meanings, and thus normally we eat a lot of food with fan- friends and family, and enjoy good time playing games, singing, or having any kind of fun. Yeah, so these were religious celebrations, which means they were maybe celebrating their kind of local gods,、yeah. special customs, having, as you said, dances, food, fun, singing, games. You know, pre. People walking through the streets,、yeah. all of those kinds of things. However, as we see in the article, this freedom came to an end when Caesar imposed the new calendar on these cultures to remind them of Roman power.、Oh, so、Caesar. he's kind of saying, like, "All right, you've had the freedom, but you need to do what we tell you to do."、Oh. So he imposed this calendar. If you impose something, you force a rule, a decision, or some kind of other behavior on someone, and it's 
almost always something that's unwelcome. It's something that people don't want or they feel they don't need.、Yeah. If you you're not you don't impose something nice on someone. So if we say, "Hey, I'm going to give you a pay rise," we don't say you're <laughs> imposing a pay rise on them.、Yeah. But if you say, "Hey,、um, you're going to have to work overtime," you are imposing overtime、exactly. on them. So it is a word with a negative meaning. And he、yeah. did that to kind of remind all these different people in these countries about Roman power. Basically, Rome is in charge. Exactly. Now we hear the word "remind somebody of something." Now this means to teaching. It means to remember something. It's like a notice to let us know not to forget something. So I could teaching. I could remind you, hey, don't forget about the test tomorrow, or something small to let you know, hey, remember it. Yep, and so the reason Caesar did this, we see in the article, he forced the empire, which it kind of wasn't called the empire then, but it basically was.、Uh, he forced everyone to recognize the dates of Roman holidays and political events. So he's saying, like, stop celebrating your gods, start celebrating、mm-hmm. ours.、Yeah. Don't pay attention to your own kind of, you know, spring festival for choosing your new leader. <laughs> you need to pay attention and celebrate our. Political events, our elections, our kind of triumphs.、Yeah. You're part of us now. You do what we do. Yeah, impose our will, impose what we want you to do. Yeah. So according to the article, by the time the Roman Empire fell, around the year 500 A.D., Caesar's calendar was well established in Europe. Now we hear fall. Now, or fell, or fall. Yeah, it's a if a place falls in a war or election, an enemy army or a different political party takes control of it. Yes, they take it over. They yeah, know, yeah, from a fight. It kind of means in this case there was an empire, and then the empire kind of collapsed. Basically, it split into two parts. Invaders took over. There were lots of wars, and it was no longer an empire by the end. But by then, so 500 A.D. So we're talking, you know, five six hundred years in the future here. Yeah. Caesar's calendar was well established. What does that exactly. mean? Exactly. No, well established means something has been built or has been standing for a long time. Now, for example, there are schools with a rich history, like Harvard and Stanford, and NTU, and even buildings like the Eiffel Tower and the Great Wall of China, which are well established, have been long. Built for a long time, yeah. Exactly, and so a calendar being well established means people have been using it a long time. That's the one they're familiar with. So we're saying after this,、uh, after the Roman Empire fell, we see in the article that, however, former territories became free to use the calendar as they wished. So let's look at the word territory. This is an area of land under the control of any kind of ruler or state or government.、Um, now we can talk about somewhere being a self-controlled territory, which means they run their own things, or it can be, be a territory that belongs to somewhere else. For example, Hong Kong used to be British territory, but now it belongs to China. Now, in this sentence, former territories mean the lands that were ruled by Rome before, when it was an empire, but which broke away and are now kind of free and running their own countries. Here's another example of territory: many countries in Africa used to be British and French territories. Oh wow, that is true. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Now this brings us to the phrasal verb as somebody wishes. Now this means whenever you please or want to. Now we can say you may leave as you wish, which means you can go whenever you want to, but normally means you have the choice to do something whenever you'd like. Or if you have a phone plan with unlimited minutes, you may talk as long as you wish per month. Yeah, so it's kind of saying, okay, the empire is gone, so you can kind of use the calendar you already have.、Yeah. You can change it if you want. You can go back to using your traditional old calendar, and so on. And we see in the article that some cultures in Italy, because there were many different groups, some cultures in Italy changed New Year's Day to September twenty third. The birthday of the first Roman emperor.、Wow. We kind of always think of the New Year starting in January or Chinese New Year、yeah. in January and February. So here we've got New Year starting in September. 
So here we use the word emperor. We've kind of mentioned the word empire, which is the land and who and the whole thing. The emperor is the person who controls it.、Um, it's the king. It's kind of like the king, but since the lands include so many other territories, then he calls it.、Uh, he's the emperor, and it's his empire. We can also use the word empress for a woman if she's the one in charge. Here's an example for emperor. Hirohito was. Emperor of Japan from 1926 until his death in 1989, and in、Ooh. fact, just last year there was a new Japanese emperor. Oh wow! Yeah, coincidence. New person. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, New Year's Eve or New Year's <laughs> Day changed to September 23rd. That's, yeah, that's unusual. That's interesting. <laughs> Let's look back at the article here, which says some Christian cultures move the day to Christmas or Easter. Okay, so New、yeah. Year's Day is now. It could be September. It could be December 25th. Yeah. It could be Easter, which kind of moves and isn't、yeah. on the same day each year. Now a lot of you might say, well, what's Easter? Now Easter is a According to the Christian belief, Easter is the day that Jesus came back alive again because、mm -hmm. he was actually he, he put to death. Yeah, put yeah. to death, and then he came alive. It's normally celebrated in March. March, March, sort of. Yeah, it, it yeah. it's one of those holidays that is on a different day every year. So it, it kind of depends. It could be late March, mid March, maybe I don't know, maybe early April.、Yeah. I'm never sure. I never、yeah. know. I have to look it up every single、yeah. year. And according to Christian culture, Christian culture is a Christianity that is. Um, they believe the Sunday is for rest because,、mm -hmm. according to their belief, God made the. Um, the world and everything around it in seven days. So、But、Sunday rested on the and re rested on the seventh. So a lot of Christians go to church and then just take the day off. But they work the、uh, the other six days. Exactly. So、uh, there were a lot, Europe was almost all Christian at that、yeah. point. So but some of them said, "Let okay, well let's make the New Year Christmas or Easter because they're important days、yes. for us." Others are saying, "Let's make it the birthday of the first Roman emperor,、yeah. uh, who by the way was Julius Caesar. We mentioned him yesterday.、Yeah. It was his grand." And nephew. Oh wow! Yeah,、uh, and、uh, a guy called. He was born Octavian. He grew up to be Augustus. Oh, was the first emperor. Yeah,、uh, and Augustus is where we get the name August. Oh, of course. So the month of August was named after him, and the month of July is named after Julius Caesar. So both very important people who got months named after them. So we still、yeah. kind of remember them today. Yep. So, okay, and,、yeah. so, so there's many different days in many different years, and there's、yeah. even more confusion here. We、yeah. see in the article that this continued for some time before Pope Gregory helped bring the problem to an end. So, yeah, it would be very confusing if in every different country around Europe they had New Year starting on a different day.、Oh. No one can agree what year it is or when it starts or、yeah. what's going on. So the Pope, who is the leader of the、mm. Most of the Christian Church、yeah. these days. At that time, it was the whole Christian Church. He helped bring the problem to the to an end. To bring something to an end means to cause something to stop. Often by making a rule or a decision, or kind of just officially announcing that something is over. Yes. For example, the teacher brought the class to an end by reviewing the things they'd learned. Yeah, bring something to an end. It's stopped now. Yeah, bring the war to an end. Exactly. Yeah. So, what did Gr Pope Gregory do? Yeah. So Gregory, according to the article, standardized the calendar in 1582 and added one extra day every four years. A leap year. Ah, yeah, and we normally have this extra day in February, so we see February twenty ninth sometimes. That's right. And it's interesting because if you have a birthday on February twenty ninth, well. What do you do? Yeah, what do you do? I, <laughs> I've known one or two people. They usually celebrate it on the twenty eighth or maybe March the first, kind、yeah. of depending on which day's better.、Um, they're not only, you know, it's it's kind of fun for them, but also sad because they're like,、oh, I don't get a proper birthday. Yeah, a every proper、year. birthday. That is true. Now we also have a word standardized. Now this verb means to make formal for everyone. Now we often hear standardized tests such as the TOEFL. Where everyone has to take it to check their English compared to everyone else. It's standardized, so it means everyone is taking the same thing,、mm -hmm. so they can know they can compare your results to everyone else. Now it's used and measured for everyone to see. 
Yeah. So we're saying, okay, everybody, stop using your own calendars. Yeah. We're going to use this one. Yeah.、Uh, it's called the Gregorian calendar after Gregory,、mm-hmm. uh, but it took years. We see 1582, so we've only had this calendar for like less than 500 years,、oh. and it took maybe a thousand years for things to get sorted. Now, why a leap year? We see in the article this exists. This extra day every four years exists because astronomers remember that word from yesterday. Noticed that the Earth took three hundred and sixty-five point two five days to circle the Sun, not three hundred and sixty-five. So it's not quite the full sort of three sixty-five. So we end up kind of being off. If we didn't have a leap year, we'd end up being off by a day or so, and we get the same problem that we had talked about in day one with the months being in different seasons and、yeah. the year being too long. So complicated. So we kind of add this day in because of the fraction.、Yeah. So here we've used a noun clause. The first part of the sentence said the astronomers noticed something, while the second clause says what it was they noticed, and we use the pronoun that to connect these two clauses. We often use clauses like this after verbs like see, notice, think, believe, consider, and the clause beginning with that. Always tells us what it is someone sees, notices, thinks, believes, and so on. Here's another example. After the film was over, Richard said that it was the best movie he'd ever seen. Oh wow, that's good. So also we have another word here, which is circle. Now this verb means to revolve around something. Now think of a solar system and how the planets are moving. So the Earth and the Moon circle the Sun. Here's an example sentence. The sharks circled the boat of people waiting for food so they could eat it. Okay, so that explains why we now have this calendar that we do have, and that brings us to the end of the article. So let's go to our for you chat question. For you chat. So our question is kind of a starts with a statement. Taiwan uses both the Western character,、uh, Western calendar year, which is 2020, and the Mingguo calendar year, which right now is 109. Do you think this is necessary? Or confusing. Well, I'll start first on that.、Okay. I think it's a little confusing because、mm-hmm. my age is written differently in the Mingguo and the calendar, the Western year. But it's confusing because if I state my age and they look at the number, I could be either I could look either as my age states in the Mingguo or the Western calendar year. So it's so like it's, a year or two difference. Yeah, They're it, not. I, odd, it sometimes、yeah. confuses me. I'm just not used to it. Even though I've been here for sort of like ten, eleven years, to go,、yeah. okay, what year is this now? And you know, I'll see like someone's birthday written down, and it will say seventy one. I was like, hang on, does that mean nineteen seventy one or like the seventy one or seventy first,、exactly. like Mingguo year? And that's the thing that in my age could look either one of those. So it's hard for、uh, the locals to tell my age. Is yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess because even even on most important sort of documents, they have either the Western one. One or both, yeah. Like it doesn't really affect me day to day. It's just for me, it's kind of like a nice and interesting sort of cultural thing yeah, that makes it different here. Like、yeah. you know, there are other you know, calendars. Like the Jewish calendar has its own sort of New Year's and way of counting.、Uh, same with the the Muslim calendar for Islam. There are there are lots of these different things. And while it's great to have a standardized calendar that helps kind of people figure things out. I think having other calendars for different countries or religions is is kind of a nice thing. Yeah, it's more interesting a little bit as a local flavor to it. Yeah, it gives、approach. them kind of their own culture, not saying、yeah. you just have to kind of follow what yeah, you know. More your own self. Western、yeah. Europe basically does. So, exactly. Yeah, I kind of think it's a good thing. It doesn't really confuse me too often, and if it does, it's not a a serious confusion. Yeah, either way, it can be okay. All right, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, everybody. For English for you, I'm Pat, and I'm Ben. Thanks for listening. Talk、Thank、to you, you again soon. Bye. Bye bye. Fun facts: Julius Caesar used his new calendar as a political tool. By then, Rome controlled Britain, France, Spain, and Greece, among other places. Before Caesar, the various cultures throughout the empire had the freedom to hold religious celebrations whenever they wanted. This freedom came to an end when Caesar imposed the new calendar on these cultures to remind them of Roman power. 
He forced the empire to recognize the dates of Roman holidays and political events. By the time the Roman Empire fell, around the year 500 A.D., Caesar's calendar was well established in Europe. However, former territories became free to use the calendar as they wished. Some cultures in Italy changed New Year's Day to September 23rd, the birthday of the first Roman emperor. Some Christian cultures moved the day to Christmas or Easter. This continued for some time before Pope Gregory helped bring the problem to an end. Gregory standardized the calendar in 1582. And added one extra day every four years, a leap year. This exists because astronomers noticed that the Earth took 365.25 days to circle the sun, not 365. Vocabulary review. Political. This country. Is in a political crisis because the elected government and the military are fighting for power. Control. The manager of this company controls the hiring of new workers. Various. Tina looked at the various countries on the map and picked a few to visit during her vacation. Freedom. In our art class, we have a lot of freedom to paint or draw whatever we want. Territory. Though it is not a U.S. state, the island of Guam is still a U.S. territory. Emperor. Napoleon Bonaparte. Was a famous emperor who ruled many countries in Europe. Celebration. Impose. Well established. Standardize. Triple 4 w dot English 4 u dot net。